So as developers, we spend an inordinate, inordinate amount of our time uh, debugging stuff. Um, so the premise of this talk is that we should have, if we're going to be spending so much time doing that, we should have the best tools for the job. Um, and I found in the past, certainly when um, I was uh, learning PHP, um, that I found proper debuggers like Xdebug quite difficult to set up. So hopefully this is going to um, help you with that. Um, so what we're going to go through. Uh, well, we're going to look at how Xdebug is configured at the server level. Um, and that's what the uh, USB pens that are getting handed out are for now. So um, there's a virtual box on that which rather than trying to get everyone, a lot of people are using Mac, so um, I guess that's pretty standardized, but I suppose people might be using Linux, people might be using Windows, so rather than trying to get you to set, set, it, set that up um, for your specific operating system, um, there's a, a virtual box, a Linux-based virtual box that you can all start with. So um, then we'll look at um, making PHP Storm and uh, NetBeans port to Xdebug. Um, how many people are using PHP Storm? Is there? Okay, a lot of you. Anyone using? Um, anyone using NetBeans already? No. Okay. So uh, <laughs> maybe we'll concentrate on PHP Storm in that case. Um, and then we'll go through a really simple example of just uh, examining the content, the contents of some of your variables um, as your code is running using Xdebug. And then um, there'll be a bit of time for you to try and set it up yourself. Uh, my colleague Michael is here with me as well, so if you've got problems or questions, then uh, we'll move around and try and help you. And then uh, depending on how, uh, what final hours we'll, um, we'll do one or two more samples of uh, using Xdebug. So, why Xdebug? Well, <coughs> probably a lot of you will recognize the functions down the side here. Probably a lot of you have used them to uh, output concepts of variables as your code is running. Um, <coughs> debug. Um, DPM are used a lot. Hint, I think, is, I haven't used that, but I think it's a Drupal 8 uh, kind of equivalent for dumping contents of variables and objects. So I kind of, uh, I kind of think of these, um, I'll explain the picture. I, I think of these variables a little bit like trying to climb Everest wearing a tweed jacket. This guy is called uh, George Mallory, and him and Andrew Irvin tried to climb Everest in, I think, about 1924, and they might have made it to the top. Nobody really knows, uh, but they certainly didn't make it back down again. So um, they were very heroic, but they weren't successful. Um, so we don't want to try and be heroic and use these kind of really primitive functions uh, to debug our code. We want the best tools uh, to, to do it. So, yeah, just to reiterate what I said <coughs> about debugging, um, you're going to spend a lot of time, I'm sure you already spend a lot of time debugging and the rest of it writing bugs. So, uh, Xdebug is kind of the, the puffer jacket to your tweed uh, jacket. So um, if you're going to be spending so much time uh, debugging, you should be clogged up properly and have all the kit. So Xdebug lets you uh, inspect your objects and your variables at runtime. Uh, it shows you what your call stack looks like. So you can see, you can see a trace of what function is called what. Um, and it integrates with your IDE, um, with PHP Storm and uh, it's open source and it's free. So, um, how do we set up? Well, um, here's some prerequisites. So you need an IDE. Um, I didn't want to concentrate entirely on PHP Storm because although it's a great IDE, um, Um, and yeah, we're going to be using, feel free to try and set this up if you want to um, 
kind of uh, play along on your own operating system and get say you can the box. Uh, sorry, get get this set up locally on your machine. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, if you use the Vagrant virtual box, we should be able to help you out a bit better to um, get stuck. Uh, yeah, so, and um, there's a readme file on the USB stick, so if you get that virtual machine, there's a tar file which you can untar, and then there's a readme which just got some fairly simple uh, command line uh, instructions as to, as to what to do. So, um, Cool, okay, so it's live demo time. So um, this is the contents of the tar file that is uh, on that USB stick. So we've got uh, some resources here. Uh, and the resources, we've got a JSON file, and we've got this virtual box. So I don't really want to, I thought quite long and hard about how to, um, uh, how to get this most um, usable for people who wanted to uh, set it up. I don't, I don't want Vagrant and VirtualBox to be a distraction from what we're actually talking about, which is XDebug. That just seems like the most appropriate thing to use. Um, probably people who use Docker and other things might think, why, why am I not using that? But um, I just wanted to use something that was quite kind of been around a while and was proven and wasn't going to be, hopefully, a distraction. So um, first thing we're going to do is uh, add that VirtualBox to Vagrant so that we can use it. So that's Vagrant box add, and we just add the JSON file which contains um, a load of configuration. I think I'll have to force it because I've probably already got it set up. And then just go into the folder that's got my uh, my vagrant file in it, and I should then be able to do vagrant up. As I say, I'll stop in a minute, and people who want to who want to see this um, see this stuff can just try and help. Uh, okay, so then I should then be able to SSH into it. And in here should have an already set up. Um, get something here. A bit of convoluted path, <laughs> but we've got um, Drupal Drupal eight installation in there, which um, we we'll use for this demo. So. Um, Uh, yeah, so the other thing I'm also going to do um, just by way of configuration is to uh, set in my host file a host name for this virtual box that we've set up so we can access it in the my terminal. Is this going to let me? Sorry, in the browser. should have very 
very slowly. Um, yeah, so I just need to add, basically, in my host file, I, sh I need to add uh, the IP address of my virtual machine and this uh, Drupal VM.dev host name. And then it should load. So it's being slow. We'll look at how Xdebug is set up. So uh, the, the first thing you're going to need to do, and I think it's on, on this virtual machine it's already installed, but uh, on any other system you'd have to install Xdebug itself. So that's, uh, we use apt-get for that because we're on Linux here, a Debian-based machine, uh, and it's PHP. say it's already installed for me yet. Yeah. So um, I think I've just got too many virtual machines running or something and it's eating up memory. So let me check that. Maybe I should just restart it. Okay, cool. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Have you got there you go. Okay. Thanks. Do a quick machine swap. Yeah. One micro. So this is what you should be seeing here. Uh, can you see that? Command font big enough for everyone to see. At the back, can you see that okay? Uh, 
Okay, and here's the uh, page we should have. Um, and whilst that's doing that, I'll just look at, I'll just show you the uh, configuration for Xdebug, and I've just talked you through that. So, um, on this virtual box, that is, we're using PHP 7, and uh, we're using FPM, which is the um, manager for fast CGI PHP, but I need to worry too much about that. Um, but that just... just dictates the path where the init file is basically. Okay, so that's an init file. Um, to To find the path to that init file, if you're not sure about it, you can go into um, the report section in Drupal and there's, um, there's a link to the uh, PHP configuration. It just gives you an output of PHP info um, and that will tell you exactly where your um, Xdebug configuration is. So, um, We've got a few settings, which are always the things that trip me up when I've tried to set this up. Um, recently. So uh, the Zend extension um, is just um, the uh, path of the extension, basically. If there's no path like that, then uh, PHP knows by default where it thinks, well, it thinks it's in the default position, and it just looks there uh, and finds the XDBug extension. Um, and then we've got the uh, remote enable. Um, so this turns on Xdebug basically, and it allows Xdebug to connect back to whatever processes made the HTTP request uh, to your site. Um, uh, and uh, do, 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 yeah, remote connects back rather than you can, if you have, um, if you have poss possibly other connections that are being made to your site, you could you could specify that you only want Xdebug to run for something that's coming from a specific host. So you could say that um, you could specify a host name and a port number here. Uh, say that you only want to run Xdebug for um, for your local machine, for example. Um, but in this case, we're just going to let Xdebug connect back to anything that's made the uh, HTTP request to your page. The remote port is just the port that Xdebug uses that you're also going to configure in your IDE so that they can talk to each other. Um, and then we've got an IDE key which um, we'll look at uh, in a bit. I think, I don't know if you actually need this for PHP Storm, I think you do for NetBeans, you might need it for other IDEs. Um, but the remote also start uh, below that kind of override override that's occurred um, that just basically says run uh, xdebug uh, under all circumstances. Um, and then we've got a path to a log file there as well, so we can, uh, if anything goes wrong, hopefully we'll get a bit more visibility through the log file. Uh, okay, so then um, you probably need to, if you made changes to that, um, you're probably going to need to restart uh, PHP service, so I'm just going to do and then I'll restart Apache as well for good measure.
So it looks like Michael's already got this set up. So um, I'm going to uh, just look at the uh, PHP Storm setup for this. So uh, and I'll start by I'll create a new project so that I can show you how it's done. So we're going to create a new project from existing files. Um, the default option there is fine, so I'm just click next, and then I need to find the project root uh, to that Drupal um, installation. Now, the thing with Vagrant uh, and VirtualBox is that uh, you can share folders from your local machine to the box itself. So uh, Drupal is actually um, installed locally at administrator. Cool. Thank you. So there's my Drupal root there. And I'm just going to mark it here as the project root. And click next. Um, I'll add a new local server so I can show you how that's done. So uh, we'll just call it DCL. Uh, this is the uh, this is the address of the site that we uh, put in the host file earlier. So uh, got what that was. Google DM. I just lost that one. that server and then we don't need to put anything in here can I? yeah that's a good idea <laughs> thank you uh, we don't need to put anything in there because we're just using the we're not in a subfolder or anything at that URL um, and then that should create uh, a project in the PHP store So that's the project set up, uh, but we need to tell PHP Storm where to find our PHP interpreter and how to connect to Xdebug. So um, that is done through PHP Storm preferences, uh, languages and frameworks, PHP, and then I think in here. Uh, there is a debug section, but at this language level here, um, we just need to set the interpreter. And we choose a remote interpreter. And we choose the vagrant uh, option here, and we need the vagrant instance folder. So that is the path to the uh, place where Vagrant is installed, which is here. I had this problem yesterday, didn't I? Do you remember what I did about that? Just work. thinking about it. So maybe I can just open that other project that we had already set up. I'm going to cancel this for now. Uh, 
right, so this is one Michael's done earlier. Uh, and we have so um, you'll see in PHP Storm there's a very small icon at the top there, which is your listener. And that's off at the moment, but uh, you want to turn that on. And uh, we're then going to uh, move forward. We're also going to um, check this. So in the run menu, we're just while we're making sure that it's set up properly, uh, we're going to check this break at first line in PHP script. So this just means that uh, the PHP is going to stop running and um, uh, then a debugging session will start uh, on the first line of PHP that runs when you execute Drupal. So to uh, bootstrap Drupal, you should just be able to refresh the page. Uh, it doesn't seem to like it. Explain some of these controls. So um, what should happen uh, when the page loads is uh, the, um, you'll get a breakpoint at the first line of a PHP code that runs. Um, and I don't know if anyone who's been uh, uh, trying to set this up now has, has got that far, but um, once that's working, you know that uh, your ID is speaking properly to Xdebug, and um, you can then turn that off for now. Um, I'm then going to open file. And you should be able to, if you click in the margin uh, next to that line of code, you'll get this little uh, red circle, which is the breakpoint. Um, and then if you then refresh your page, I don't know if it's do it for me, but we should get a break point appearing there. <coughs> yeah. Is it already open? Uh, that one. Ah. Uh, so it's. Sorry, it is. It's just hidden. Thank you very much. 
Okay, brilliant. Okay, so that's next step, isn't it? Uh, so, so, so what's happened here is the um, answer to that. Uh, the so my code stopped running. That's why if I look at the browser, um, it's still you can see that it's the, the page is still loading, but it's actually stopped uh, at this breakpoint. Um, and I can see uh, in the debugger. look at uh, the globals, for example, um, and we can, um, if there were cookies set or if there were getting get post variables, we could look at those. Um, we can see there's a bunch of server, var server variables that you can see here. Um, uh, these are kind of PHP fundamentals. Um, and then we can see this, uh, this autoloader um, we this also load of, load of variable that we created on the line above. You can see that that's uh, visible in your debugger here, um, and you can see that uh, that is some sort of object, uh, and it's got uh, it's populated with um, arrays and other uh, uh, items in there. So you you're able to um, browse through uh, everything uh, all the variables that memory at, um, at any one time. So I was going to um, show, we've only got five minutes left haven't we? Did it finish at quarter to? No, you've got ten minutes left. Ten minutes left, okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you uh, an example which might or might not work. Uh, So, uh, um, <coughs> it's going to go into the Drupal root in my virtual machine, and I'm just going to enable the examples module. I'm getting this warning, I think. The permission can't stuff up properly on the uh, folder where Xdebug is trying to log stuff to, but we'll leave that for now. Um, so I'm enabling the examples examples for developers uh, module, which is just a, a Drupal config module, uh, and in there um, I think we've got a sub module called. <laughs> Examples or um, hooks example, I think. Okay, so that's enabled, and I'm going to go into PHP Storm and I'm going to find one of those examples. So um, here I've got a implementation of uh, the node view hook, and um, I might use this, for example, to uh, um, in a complete hypothetical, hypothetical examples to change some of the properties of a node in Drupal before it actually gets uh, displayed. So let's create a quick. Uh, I'm going to stop my debugger. Also happy to stop it here. So if I can reload the page. Yeah. Uh, 
again. I'm just going to create an example node. Logins, admin, and password. People are really using it. Uh, it's just a default site, so I'm just going to create an article node. Save that and publish it. And then I also, I know that this hook, uh, I think only runs after cache has been closed. So I'm just going to clear the cache with Josh. And I'm then going to set a breakpoint inside that implementation of a uh, hook node view, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to um, see all the uh, variables that we have in that hook that we can uh, change before the node is viewed. So I'll start my debugger, open my uh, debug window from down here, and let's ref refresh that no view page. So it stops, I've still got that first breakpoint, so it stopped there. So I'm just going to remove that breakpoint and click this uh, resume program button here, which should keep running the application. And yeah, so you can see I've now stopped uh, on the first line of code inside that hook. And um, I can see, so variables that are getting passed in or parameters that are getting passed into this um, hook implementation are build, uh, entity, display, and view mode. And I can uh, see exactly what's in each of those um, by browsing them in my debugger here. So um, one example might be um, uh, that possibly one of the properties on your node um, well, you might use pre-processing for this, but um, um, but so if you yeah if you were using that hook, you'd probably be very tempted to use things the functions that we've uh, looked at before, print uh, underscore r dpm x int. Um, but this is much more efficient, so you can see exactly what variables you've got when you're implementing that hook. Um, and uh, then you know how to work with them. So I'm going to stop there, I think, quick. Well, I'm still kind of ahead. Um, if anyone wants to um, hang around and try and get it set up, um, then uh, do so. We'll, me and Michael are trying to help you. Um, but yeah, hope that was useful. And I hope you're going to be able to implement Xdebug and start using it. It's definitely worth getting through all the teething trouble and uh, the uh, headache of configuring it because um, once you've got it set up, you'll never want to be without it. Thank you, everyone.